Hi everyone, this is Dr. Charles Lee. Before this episode starts, I have a small favour to ask from you. Many visit and uh, watch the videos and they find it very informative, they get excited. Um, some of them write to me on my email, but they don't subscribe. So, would you do me a small favor? Would you just press that subscribe button? Um, it'll be so good for all of us. Uh, certainly, it helps the channel grow. It adds a little bit of vitality to the channel. At the same time, the numbers uh, get bigger and, I, and my heart gets bigger too. So, just to know that you're with me, uh, you enjoy the company and I enjoy your company, you won't believe it. So, please, subscribe, press that button. I want to hear those bells jingle. And most of all, stay tuned and I love your company. We'll talk again. You know, heart-to-heart -heart conversations are so important today uh, where we want real honesty, we want truth, we want the real deal of what it is to live the real life. And heart talk is about issues, real issues concerning health, wealth, lifestyle, living, and most important of how to live to the fullest potential of what we are all capable of doing. And really, to, to really explain all this and uh, is my guest today, um, she's an exemplary person that I've been so excited. I can't wait to just bring her on board for you to join in. Um, she's a writer, she's an author, she's an activist, she's a mother, and she's the daughter to the most important political figure in Maud, Malaysia. Datin Paduka Marina Mahathir's life journey and testimony goes beyond the personal and into the heart of what truly matters in a family and in the life of a nation. Her most recent book, and I'm showing it to you right here, is The Apple and the Tree, which is a glimpse into the history of a nation's quest for survival and into the world of the life of a family that is all too familiar to many of us this past 50 years, including me. So without further ado, would you please join me to welcome Marina Mahathir. Welcome, Marina. Welcome to Hard Talk. Thank you. Thanks for having me. And I want to congratulate you on this book. Thank you. Thank it's you. Beautiful. It's a wonderful read. And while I'm holding it up, let me put a plug in right now. Friends, if you're watching in, uh, in three weeks' time, we're going to celebrate Mother's Day. And this <laughs> is a perfect gift to your mother, uh, to those who are mothers-to-be, and those who are planning to get mother, and you'll be a mother someday. But to all the women out there, and including the men, to everyone, Read this book cover to cover, and then you'll know who Thank I'm you. talking about. So there you go. I mean, it's a, it's a beautiful, I can tell you one thing, it's so beautifully written. Uh, and the Thank reason, you. Yep, and the reason why is because I'm going to spend this time with you, Marina, over the next 40, 45 minutes. You can spend the whole day with me talking, but three chapters are very personal to me. They just leapt out. And, and I had to pause and pause. And it took me a while to finish the book because of these three chapters. And so I want to start off with the first, uh, the, the first part of it, and that is chapter 22. Um, and the title is Taking a Breather. And uh, uh -huh. to me, this is very important because it's like breaking free from what was your know, first love, and that was writing. Um, and I think this, this conversation we're going to have uh, would be very interesting for those who are thinking of writing, journalism, blogging, all that that concern, because the very source of someone to write, Marina, is creativity. And I'm a big one for creativity, because if you don't have a creative mindset, you can't write. Um, and so to me, you know, uh, to me, creativity is the currency of the mind. And there's so yeah. much for the battle of the mind. And I can tell you one thing, I've been struggling for two years to write a book. Uh, and I got, you know, as a surgeon, I, you know, I've worked 40, what, 40 years as a doctor. 
so much has happened in my life and and I've got this book out and I thought, how on earth am I going to start this first page? And so when I went through your book and how you struggle through, you know, just writing is one thing, but becoming an author and a good one, and you're a good writer, uh, is really a, a, a long task. So why writer? Why did you realize that you had this talent to write? Well, I don't think I ever thought of it as a talent. Um, I mean, I, I always wrote from, from young. I mean, I, I read a lot and I think all writers read a lot. You, you really cannot write if you don't read. So I, I read a lot as a child and um, I loved uh, English uh, in school. So, and, and the days that I liked most were the days when we had to write essays. Um, because I just like writing uh, stories and, and finding different ways of uh, talking about uh, things, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So English was always my favorite subject. And, and I, it, it was really a combination of loving reading and loving writing because it really comes together. Um, and I, I knew I always wanted to join a profession where I could write a lot. So I always wanted to be a journalist. Um, although a journalist, of course, writes nonfiction. Um, and I was reading and I almost always read fiction, uh, which is two different things, actually. Um, you know, nonfiction relies on actual facts, whereas fiction, you can make up things. So there's more creativity involved in writing fiction, which is something that I don't write than uh, fiction. But nowadays, there's this thing called narrative nonfiction or creative nonfiction, where you write about something factual, um, such as about a person's life or a particular time, uh, like a memoir, or about you know a scientific subject or something, but you tell a story around it. Um, and, and that makes it much more readable, I think, much more um, interesting. Um, and uh, that's what I, I've tried to do now because I, I just got really tired of writing very straight, um, you know, pieces uh, like for my column. I, you know, I've been writing my column in the papers for more than 30 years. And I was getting a bit tired of that because, you know, it's it's only about 800 to 1,000 words and I have to be very concise. And it's it's sort of, although it's an opinion piece, so it doesn't have to be extremely dry like a news report, but still it relies on on facts and, and things like that. So I really wanted to learn how to write something longer um, and more with a, a better narrative, a uh, more story-like narrative. And that's why I went off to study. They, they talk about the Holy Trinity when it comes to writing, and that is the writer, the characters, and the audience. Um, mm. How important it is for someone to write and think, who's going to read this? Because sometimes you get stuck, you know, you think that nobody's going to bother about it. So how do you write and how important is it to just get the facts out? But do you think about the audience too? No. Good. Um, I mean, I, I, you know, facts, of course, like when I write my column, it's, it's usually based on something that's happened, something I've read in the papers, something like that. So that's the facts part. But I don't um, write for an audience because okay. if you do that, then you find that you are tailoring your opinions for an audience and, and you lose a lot of authenticity when you do that because you are crafting it to suit a particular audience. Right. Um, so I write for myself. I write what I think um, because that's the only honest way of writing. And if it happens to resonate with uh, readers out there, then that's great, you know? You're right. Um, and, and and as it happens, my column has resonated with a lot of people. So that's lucky for me. But you can't actually write a column anyway uh, for 
for people. Books are slightly different. Of course, there are different genres of books and it really matters whether you want to write, say, an academic book or a book that appeals to a wider audience. Right. So right. then the language that you use would be different. Um, but okay. again, you have to be true to yourself. You have to um, be yourself when you write it. It has to be, you know, you cannot write it pretending to be someone else, really. It's very yeah. hard um, unless you're writing fiction. Right. Uh, of course, where people, you know, they write fantasy and they could be an alien so, or yeah. in the case of the last Booker Prize uh, winner, he, he was writing from a point of view of someone who was dead. Right. So, um, yeah. so it's it's um, it's it's sort of different uh, things. But um, the, the most important thing is to, to be yourself when you write. No, this, this is pointed because. Um, I wanted to spend this time with you on this particular thing because, you know, you, you were doing what you love to do. If that's your first yeah. love. But you felt limited, you see, for many, many years until the age of, what, 60. This is, this I call this a transition period where finally, why didn't you think of doing creative writing much, much earlier, stepping into it? Was it because oh, the time was not right? I think just life got in the way, really. Okay, okay. Um, I mean, my first degree was in international relations because I thought that was a be that would be a good background for um, journalism, and then I did that, and then I did various things. I did PR, and I always had a communications uh, base for everything I did. Even when I was leading an NGO, when I led the Malaysian AIDS Council, communication was very important because to me that was. Uh, advocacy, you know, you, you're talking Absolutely. to the public about That's a right. very difficult issue. So you have to know how to communicate, whether it is in writing or orally or, or whatever, you know. So I guess, you know, and then in the meantime, I got married and I had kids and and just things um, just got in the way. And, and it was only much, much uh, later when my kids are grown up and I felt that I could, you know, afford to go away um, to do it. Um, no, I mean, this is, this is why chapter 22 leapt out for me because I was struggling to write this book, as I was telling you, for the last two years. And, um, and you know, the hallmark of a creative writer, or in fact, creativity, is that they create opportunities. They don't wait for the opportunity to come to them. They create it. And that's that's mm. the key of a of, of a creative writer, and so at the age of sixty one, you know, enrolling into university again, I mean, there must have been trepidation. There must have been thought, cold feet. What's going on? You know, uh, what are you going to share? Because for me, coming out at sixty two, getting a master's degree in creative writing, I mean, that's your Oscar. <laughs> well, I guess a PhD would be an ultimate. Well, I'm, I'm coming to that. I'm coming to that. But um, what I mean is that. It must have been a challenge. Talk to us about that because there are many who would be, you know, they, they were even at this stage in their life and they've always wanted to write. And uh, where do they start? Or there's, let's say somebody who's already a writer listening in right now or a journalist. Yeah. Would they, would this be the time for them? When would be a good time for them to get onto something and specialize in it, like creative writing? Take up something, of course. You can take it anytime as a writer's life. Yeah, I think anytime. I mean, there's some people who start very young and, and some people who, you know, start much later. I can't remember the name of, uh, there's a particular novelist who got her first book published at 70 or something like that, you know. Oh, that's me. And well, you know, <laughs> and so it's, it, it's really anytime. The, the thing is, I mean, writing a book takes time. Uh, it really takes time. Some people take years and years to write one book, you know, and they may only have one book in them. Um, and and that's, you know, so everyone's life is different. So they have to carve it out uh, for themselves. Actually, I, I don't know. Well, I chose the right time and the wrong time. Uh -huh. I went off in 2018 um, the year that uh, Pangata Harapan came into government uh -huh. and I was very much part of that. My dad, you know, was in office again and 
And everyone was saying, like, why are you going away now? You know, there's so many things happening. So I was very unsure. But at the same time, I thought, you know, I'm already, by that time, actually, I was 60, 61, you know. And I thought, if I don't go now, I, you know, I, I'm already going to be very old in this class. Uh -huh. And <laughs> if I don't go now... Um, I will definitely be the oldest person in the class. Um, as it happened, I was the second oldest in the class. Um, but also, I was very glad that I did it then, that I made the decision to go then, because I finished in uh, July 2019. Right. And six, six months later, it was COVID. Oh, dear. Okay. And, you know, and I, I just kept saying, you know, I, I thank God that I decided to go then because Absolutely. I would have been so upset if Absolutely. everything got postponed because of COVID. As it was, my actual graduation ceremony was postponed for two years uh, because of COVID. Mm. But, you know, if, if I had to do all my classes online or whatever, because of COVID, I would have been really upset. You know, because yeah. I actually loved being in class. I had a wonderful class. I had 15 classmates who were just great. We got on so well, despite, you know, a range in ages and coming from everywhere, all sorts of different backgrounds. So, yeah, so I mean, really... That's a yeah. You just have to grasp the opportunity, and Absolutely. once you do, you, you just do it. You know. Absolutely, that that's the mind of a of a creative person, actually. And um, yeah, I mean, it's 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 so inspiring for somebody who's listening in that there's no age limit to what you want to do. No, um, not at create all. that opportunity, go for it, finish it, and be happy with. It. That's what I, I had to kind of like you know spend a year now and a half by myself, like a sabbatical, just to put all my journey on a paper. So that it'll yeah. bless somebody else's life. And if I well, didn't do it now, I'll have to write from heaven. <laughs> uh, well, it, you know, it is really important to write things down because I keep telling people a book that's in your head is not a book. Absolutely. It, well done. You know, yeah. it has to be it has to be seen by other people, you know, be, before you can call it a book. So even if you just start writing a little bit, one of the things that I did, um, while I was writing the book, um, because I was doing an, an online course as well on memoir writing. Mm -hmm. And they, they recommended that every morning when you get up, before you do anything else, you try and write 500 words. And, and that's really a great exercise, actually. Just whatever you think of before your mind gets, uh, you know, filled with anything else. Goes into a default mode. Yeah, you just write, and I mm. found that really helpful. And it they be they became the genesis of a lot of the chapters of the book. Wow, thank you. I mean, this is uh, wonderful to listen. Um, and for those, you know, uh, you know, when you talk with somebody, like especially for me, you know, you know, as a father who's a doctor, and, and if a child comes up, if my son come up, all three of them are doctors today. Uh, but if one of them had come up and said, "Daddy, I want to go and do writing," I would have said, "What?" You know, because uh, many of them feel that way. You know, journalism. I, I know of a journalist friend who's hopping from one magazine kind of thing to another because they only get paid for thousand five, two thousand ringgit. And then I, I read about you at eight hundred ringgit. It was a time of like you know ecstasy for you to take your family out for for dinner. Um, yeah, so well, you... first job and all that. But you know, there are some great uh, doctors who have become writers, best-selling yep. writers. You're looking at one. You know? <laughs> well, no. I, I mean, fiction writers. I know, yeah. Uh -huh. um, I don't know whether you've read Atul Gawande, who mm -hmm. wrote, he didn't write fiction. He writes nonfiction. Uh -huh. Have you heard of him? What's his name again? Atul Gawande. He's Indian-American. He's uh, American, actually. And he actually wrote a whole book about, about death. Oh, really? Yeah. But, but it's so moving. Ah. It's so wonderful. Um, and it's really, you know, he's just contrasting the way Americans face it and Indians, like his father back in India. Right. You know, and how, you know, you have the support and all that, whereas in America you get 
put in a home maybe you know that sort yeah, of thing yeah, yeah. it's a wonderful i i can't you can google it but i can't remember I will, the name well, i've the got book. the name down i've got the name down yeah but okay so and, so and there's, yeah there's um there's also i think his name is abraham something um wrote a book called cutting in stone i think uh-huh. it's about a doctor in ethiopia he's indian but he wrote this book fiction about being a doctor in this small town in in ethiopia and right. that was the time the war and you know it it's the setting is fantastic the whole story is fantastic yeah and um yeah, it's one of the best books i've ever read uh, i mean i've ever read i mean really I, i'm yeah. going to follow that up because there's power in the storytelling um yeah and, i'll yeah. i'll give you all the no worries all the names I, I, uh, later i've read uh, dr jill forte who had a stroke and how she came out of that so there's a lot of that going on but uh, there's but so so many so yeah. many you know but, but um, you know the question is which you have really pointed in this book you have set the bar so high is a, the point is to be a good writer you see which which you are you know um i suppose that's kind of subjective also. is that right okay i think so but you know i i find that it's a very strange thing in in malaysia people read books people read international best sellers and all that but sometimes they are they are accepting of local writers who don't write as well just because they are local right I mean, right I, I, there are some really good malaysian writers a lot of them are overseas uh people like tash ao um prita samarasan yeah. uh, one of them uh tantan eng is coming out with a new book um and there, there are lots of and, and i'm not saying everyone is terrible but there are some books which i've read uh which are just so badly written yeah, and well, and i don't know why people accept that is the same with movies you know we Absolutely. see all the big international movies and even yeah. small films from places like iran or wherever which are so good yep yep and yep. yet for local movies we accept much lower standards i i don't get that i think this country needs an, a creative writing academy some of the universities have some sort of writing courses a lot of it is geared towards um uh, you know like mass com you know like advertising or pr okay. but writing novels or writing creative non fiction i'm not sure there is um a journalism school of course you know uh, places like uitm and usm i think they have a uh, good uh, mass com um okay. degree courses where okay. people do learn to write but i'm not sure about writing fiction or or narrative non fiction i'm not sure whether that's available here i i must say i didn't really look it up okay but that's... it would be good because it's a totally different thing Absolutely. entirely I'm sure i'm sure so when when you read like feature stories in the newspapers here and and you read you know feature stories that are in the new york times or the guardian or you know long long read a lot of people here say that nobody reads long features anymore they just want short things which is quite true and you can blame it all on social media but at the same time i think we don't even try to yeah. see if there's anyone Okay. who will you know read something uh, okay. longer by the way i should mention there are individuals who who teach creative writing i'm sure people like sharon baka and and all like that yeah okay so not to well, excuse well, well, them well thank you for mentioning that